All right, all right, here we go. Got a new microphone. So let's see if this works better than what was happening last week. Uh, feel free to let me know uh, in class if we have any issues. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, relations. It's our first lesson in Chapter 2. And we're going to talk about some functions, graphing, you know, some stuff that you did back in the day. First, a relation is a pairing of input values with output values. Uh, there are three common ways to represent a relation um, that doesn't deal with graphing. The first one, A, is called ordered pairs. What you can do is you just look through and obviously you know the first number in each set of parentheses is your X value and the second one is your Y value. B is called a mapping. That's where you list your inputs on one side, your left side, and you list your outputs on the right side, and then you draw arrows from what each input gives you as an output. And then finally, C is graphing, but by with a scatter plot. So what we're going to do, just for a minute, is we're going to talk about what domain range and a function are, and then we're going to go back up to A, B, and C and determine if they are actually functions. So first of all, domain would be your inputs, which most commonly we will use as x. Your range is the output, which will most likely be your y. Now a function. In order for a relation to be a function, each input has only one output. So that means for any given input you only have one output that will come out of it. Okay? So now we're going to go back and we're going to determine if A, B, and C represent functions. So there's different things you can do for these different types. So first of all what you want to do is you want to look at all of your inputs, your X values for A. So you've got 3 gives you 5. That's fine. 4 gives you 5. 5 gives you 5. 6 gives you 5. But now we go back and we have 4. 4 still gives you 5. Which means this is okay. Each input only gives us one output. So yes, this is a function. Now if you're unsure what happened there, let's hold off a second. And let's look at B. Negative 1 gives you 9. 0 gives you 8. 1 gives you 7. And it gives you 10. So if we look at this as an ordered pair, we have negative 1 gives you 9. We have 0 gives you 8. And then we have 1, which is going to sometimes give us 7. And sometimes 1 is going to give us 10. That just broke the rule of a function. A function will give you one output for every input. Only one output per input. One cannot give you seven one time and then say, hey, you know what, today I feel like giving you ten. So this is not a function. Okay? And then the last thing we're going to do is look at a graph. Is this graph representing a function? That means does each input, which would be our x, give us only one output? So it looks okay for 15-year-olds. And maybe 15 and a half is... Oh, wait, check it out. 16. There are two 16-year-olds with different heights. 16-year-old that has 68 inches and another one that has 74 inches. So is this a function? No, it is not because... Two in, or one input gave you two different outputs. Okay, so that is um, how you tell if something is a function based on um, a little scatter plot, mapping, or ordered pairs. Next thing we're going to do is determine if a relation is a function based on its graph. Now this might ring a bell. It is called the vertical line test. Okay, it's the vertical line test. There's two steps. First, draw vertical lines left to right. Draw vertical lines left to right, or right to left, 
for that matter. It doesn't matter. Then each line you draw must only touch the graph one time. Now that's per vertical line, okay? So let's go look at A, B, and C on our graphs. We're going to determine if they are functions. So as mentioned, what you do is you d just draw vertical lines from left to right, or right to left if you want, doesn't matter, and you go like this, and you keep on going like this, and then what you do is on a vertical line, if it touches it more than one time, which you probably already see is happening multiple times, then it is not a function. So the answer to this one is no. Now the graphs can look all sorts of crazy ways, so let's do this. As you see, something that just came back from last chapter, open and close circles. Remember, closed circles represent that the value counts, and open means it is not included. So. If we go through this and look, we've got one time, one time. This doesn't count because it's a hole that represents the space. This one counts. Every one of these vertical lines that you draw only touches the graph once. So yes, this is a function. Think about the last one for a second. Draw some vertical lines. One time, one time, one time, one time. Yes, it is. A function because none of your vertical lines will touch it more than once okay moving along one type of function is a linear function which may be written as a form y equals mx plus b old school stuff it's slope intercept form your dependent the dependent variable will be your y which is your output also known as your range your independent is x which is your input, also known as your domain. Okay, so function notation basically gets rid of the y. Instead of y equals something with an x, this says a function of x is equal to 7x minus 9. What we're going to do is we're going to find f of 255. That means that x is 255. What is the function's value? Okay, so the only thing we're going to do is this. All we have to do is say f of 55 or 255 is equal to 7. x is now 255 minus 9. Order of operations will tell you that the answer is 7 times 255 minus 9, which means the function of 255 is equal to 1776. Okay, it's just, it's the exact same thing as y equals 7x minus 9, except for we're replacing a y with an f of x, which is function notation. Okay, so we're going to make a t-table and graph y equals 3x plus 1. Yes, I understand that you can probably graph that using y equals mx plus b, starting at 1, using your slope of 3, and graphing. However, we're going to pretend that you forgot how to do that. We're going to make a t-table. When we make t-tables to graph, a lot of times what I say is pick 0 and then pick two positive numbers and two negative numbers. So we're just going to go with negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2 just for fun. If it's better to do something like a negative 3 and a negative 6 and a 3 and a 6 based on, you know, whatever information you have, go for it. So what we want to do here is we want to evaluate. So what you would have to do for each one of these individually would be 3 times a negative 2 plus 1. That'll tell you this function, so f of negative 2, is equal to a negative 5. I understand you can do the rest of these in your head. So what is the function's value when x is equal to negative 1? You would substitute it in 3 times a negative 1 plus 1 is going to tell you that the answer to this is a negative 2. Continue with 0. 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1. And then 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. And 3 times 2 plus 1 is 7. And then what you would do is you would just graph each one of these points individually.
negative 2 comma negative 5, negative 1 comma negative 2, 0 comma 1, which is your y-intercept, 1 comma 4, and 2 comma 7. As you can see, they increase by 3 as you go from left to right every time, known as your slope, which is rise of 3 over a run of 1. Okay, that's how you graph with a t-table. Again, that's y equals mx plus b. You probably could have done it in half the time. We're just trying to give you an idea of what these t-tables are. Okay, number two. At 2.4 calories burned per pound of weight each hour, the calories C burned in H hours by a 110-pound person walking briskly can be modeled by C is equal to 110 times 2.4 times H. So, for a walk of up to 4 hours, identify the domain and range. Up to 4 hours. So, that means C is equal to 110 times 2.4 times 0 and C is equal to 110 times 2.4 times 4. We need to find the minimum amount of calories and the maximum. So that means our domain is 0 amount of time walking which is less than or equal to H number of hours which is less than or equal to four hours. Our range is what these values equal. So if we substitute 110 times 2.4 times 0, if you don't walk you're not going to burn anything. But if you walk briskly for four hours, all you have to do is 110 times 2.4 times 4 and you will burn 1056 calories. So our range, if we don't walk at all, we burn nothing, but if we walk for four hours, we are going to burn up to 1,056 calories. So part B says graph the function and use the graph to estimate how long it takes to burn 400 calories. So all we have to do here is a little one, two, three, four, and then we said if you don't walk at all, you burn nothing, and why don't we go all the way up to say uh, 1056 so we're just gonna say approximately 1750 500 250 and 0 if you walk 0 you burn 0 if you walk for an hour then you're gonna burn approximately 264 calories all I did was plug one into there if you walk for two hours, it's going to be approximately somewhere right in this guy. Um, about. And then we're going to do a little something like this. Okay, all we did was plug in each individual value, which you can do. And then we're going to say, hey, you know what? After how many hours am I going to do approximately 400 calories? If I did this a little bit more accurately, we would say approximately 1.5 hours. Okay, now how did I get that? Well, again, let's go back here and let's actually plug in the values. After two hours, it's approximately 528. Okay, approximately two hours is 528. Okay, and then after three hours, we plug in three, we're gonna get 729. And then four, after four hours, we found out that would be 1,056. And all we did was guesstimate where would it be about 400, and that's why I predicted about 1.5. Now, can we figure that out mathematically? Of course we can. We would just use the function, and we would just solve for, um, we would just put the 400 is equal to 110 times 2.4, times h and solve but this one said use the graph to estimate so whenever it says estimate you can just give it your best guess last question we're gonna run out of time in 20 seconds so I don't think I'm gonna get to it so go ahead try it on your own I will tell you that your domain is supposed to be 1450 which is less than or equal to f which is less than or equal to 2100 and finally your range is supposed to be 
10,000 or 108,750, which is less than or equal.